Over the years, I have found myself collecting a great many different things, from toys to games to pop vinyls to action figures to you name it. And generally, it kind of comes in waves. And right now, I find myself in this phase of collecting vintage handheld and tabletop electronics. Uh, what sparked it was a, a few weeks ago when I came across some Tomitronic gadgets and some Coleco gadgets, and I've reviewed those here on the channel. But not only did I find myself wanting more of those, it also sparked something in the back of my mind that reminded me of one of these units that I sort of had when I was a kid I had borrowed from a friend back in the early 80s. And I loved it, and I kind of had hoped that he'd forgotten about it, but he hadn't, and when he moved, he's like, hey, I want it back. And it was um, a handheld Galaxian 2 unit from Intex Electronics. Well, lucky me, I was able to find one finally, and I'm gonna give you a tour of it and show you what it's like to play and why I was so addicted to it and had to have this back in my collection right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the Order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. What we're talking about here is Galaxian 2 from Intex Electronics. Now, Galaxian 2, I know it's covered up. There you can see the Galaxian 2 on there because there's some cool stickers on there that I'm not taking off. But Galaxian 2 is not a sequel to Galaxian. Uh, Galaga is the sequel to Galaxian. Um, what the two stands for is it is a two-player game, simultaneous two-player game. Two people can play this, uh, where one can be the uh, the hero and one can be the enemies, the aliens that are coming down. It is effectively Galaxian. It's a, a fixed shooter. Um, the reason I found it so cool and the reason that I remembered it so fondly is because though it came out in 81 when most of the things we've been looking at uh, came out, it felt so far ahead of its time because uh, as we'll talk about in a second when we look at this, I always consider a lot of these units, even back to the Coleco, Donkey Kong, and Pac-Man, they're like this slideshow that's progressing every like half second or so, and you just need to you know move your your man in between those slides and make sure you don't collide with anything, or you do collide whatever you're trying to accomplish. But this one felt so much more fast paced. It almost felt like it was a real uh, CRT screen. Of course, it's not. It's VFD. But as you'll see when we play it. Uh, elements move so fast, there's this nice illusion of a star field, and it feels so much more like you're playing a real arcade game. It did to me, at least when I was a kid. So I was able to acquire this one through eBay in pretty doggone good shape. So let's take this guy to the table and check it out right now. Here we go then. I was able to find this one complete in the box. It has all the manual and everything, even the foam packed in the box. And the box is in fair shape. Uh, it does have some really cool stuff in the corner here. You can see that it was sold by KB Toys for $49.99. Was that in the 80s? Man, that's, I guess it had to be. And there's a big KB sticker here. They recommend Rayovac batteries. See the sales clerk. So, <laughs> well, and I hear these were really rough on batteries anyway. So they use four C cells. So even KB was uh, kind of hawking some Rayovac batteries to go with them. If you flip it over, you can see even more cool stuff in the packaging. Uh, so why is this split down the middle? It's because Kablamo, it has this cool opening thing. And I love this diagram where they go through all the effort of not only showing you, look, here's the buttons and the controls and stuff. They're even pointing to elements on the screen that are like, oh, this is an attacking alien. These are stars and those are bombs and missiles. <laughs> so, and on the side, it talks about uh, the stuff we know about, you know, VFD games, exciting three color fluorescent display. Uh, you know, it was instructions, use the C-cell batteries, all that kind of stuff. So, all right, let's get this thing open and show you how cool the unit is. And yeah, you're right, it kind of looks like a spaceship. Once we get it unpacked, we have the cool kind of almost Battlestar Galactica looking or Millennium Falcon looking uh, unit, which we're gonna get to. And then we have uh, the manual here. So in the manual, this is a big fold out deal that has many, many pages of, you know, how to insert the batteries, kind of a map of the screen, talking about all the strategy of the game. And you could just keep unfurling it. And there are pages upon pages in the warranty information. Uh, and why do you need all this for a game that's basically as simple as Galaxian? Well, you'll see as we get into it, there's a lot more to this Galaxian 2 uh, than meets the eye. 
Now your first impression when you look at this might be, oh, I've seen these a million times before. Here's a handheld game, you hold it in your hand like this, and that's how you play. No, that's not how you play. If you're playing single player, or double player for that matter, you hold it this way. So this wide screen is actually a tall screen. So this is the player one's left, right, and fire button control. This is the power on uh, and off button down here. And if you're playing as player two, it's the other way around. So as the enemy, you have a four directional and a fire button. Plus there's some more control buttons over here. Now all the control buttons are very mushy. They're not at all clicky. I'm guessing maybe it's a little membrane board under there or something. It's definitely not a micro switch or anything. But look at all these different switches that are on the unit. Here on the player one side, you have the power on off switch and you go midway and it's on with sound and all the way over is on but muted. Uh, one thing I'd noted of many of these games is they're very blippy and you know parents might get upset if you're playing them too much. Well, this guy had a mute function baked right in. Over here on that player two side, you have even more control over the game. So there's a difficulty level, skill one or skill two, and then you can change it from being a one player game to a two player game, or if you boot it up like this, there's even a demo mode that I'll show you as well. Now this Galaxian 2 unit arrived to me just like you see it. I didn't have to do any cleanup. It's already, I'm going to say it's already been cleaned up because let's take a look around the back side of that battery box. Like many of the units, we have the Cliff's Notes version of the instructions for when you as a kid lose the instructions, which is liable to happen. Uh, and the battery box, what you'll see is not pristine actually. It has had some corrosion in it. So, but you can see it's been somewhat cleaned up. Now I've already tested it. It does work. So the good news is, look, someone has already given this some TLC. It's not pristine again, but they've cleaned up the corrosion as best they can. You can see they've scraped off here so you have a nice contact. So let's throw some batteries in it, power it on, and I'll give you a tour of the game itself. The reason that I so much wanted to add this back into my collection. All right, so we got some batteries in it. Now, before we start it, remember, this is not how you play it. This is how you play it. So let's power it on and give it a shot. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've got the two arrows here and the fire button, so let's give it a shot. So you can see you've got the uh, the Starfield coming down, plus you've got the dive bombing aliens, plus you've got their their bullets, plus your bullets, and the pace is just so good for a VFD game. I've always kind of felt that a lot of VFD games were like a slideshow that you could play. And you just had to make sure that you made your moves before the next slide hit, you know what I mean? But the reason I always felt that this one stood above others I played was because of how quickly the screen refreshes and the illusion of you know movement through the star field. And it just doesn't feel like a slideshow. It feels it feels like a video game. Now the score can only go up to 9999, at which point it will roll over. And I seem to recall in my youth, uh, I gave it a good run. I'm not sure I ever actually rolled it over, but I know I got up into the, you know, three or four thousands at least. It gets progressively more difficult, but because it's so formulaic and it has a limited number of things it can do, the difficulty can only get so high. And then it's kind of a, <laughs> it becomes... Can the batteries last long enough for you to get a high score? All right, I'm doing kind of a bad job of losing here. So <laughs> let me let my ship get hit. And just want you to hear the little uh, ending song tune. There's one down. Just get under this bullet and get hit. There's two. Nice that they let the screen clear before you uh, take your next turn. Yeah. Come on, shoot me, shoot me. Cute. Uh, let's try the uh, second skill level, so skill level two, just to see how much more challenging uh, it gets. So I think in general, just the uh, more enemies come diving at you at once. So here we go. Skill two. I mean, maybe it's a little faster. It doesn't feel crazy fast though. Oh yeah, more, oh, definitely more stuff happening. So there's your skill level two. More stuff to dodge, more bullets on the screen at once too, I think. I appreciate they can hold down on the left, right arrows and continue to move. Although 
I don't often do it. It's usually small adjustments since there's only, what, uh, like eight, eight spots across the screen you can even be. Okay, I've now flipped it around so you can see the two-player variety. I've switched it to two-player mode, and I will say that on this unit, I feel like either it's slow to respond or the buttons have a problem, but I mean, it works, but it doesn't feel as responsive as I'd like. I don't know if that's, again, does this unit have a defect? Is it, uh, is it worn out or something? But the, the single player works great, so I'm happy about that. But I want to show you the two player and how it works, kind of. All right, so here I am moving the enemy. And I can shoot pretty regularly. And I can kind of move. i got to hold it down to go. I feel like some of these buttons are a little... Might need to take a look and see how those buttons are. But you can move up, you can move down some. You move, you move diagonally if you if it'll accept it. The idea is you can move and you can shoot, but it's one enemy at a time, but it's an intelligent enemy because it's your buddy, right, who would be playing the second player. And you can get over here and come on, move over. And uh, got him. <laughs> yeah, and so you'd have to move off the screen just like in one player mode before uh, the good guy gets back. Now, I remember playing this as two player and it's not a whole lot of fun for the guy playing the aliens, as you might imagine. Because uh, his job is to just be a moving target. Uh, there's no score for the second player or anything. So it's a neat concept. And I think it's what sold a lot of these units. It's what got me interested in it. But the real value is in that single player. Back around to player one side then. Uh, something that's really cool about this is you can switch from one player to two player dynamically. And I remember using that as a pause mode. So let me flip it back to one player and you can see the computer will immediately take over for you. And if you're having trouble and you need to pause, go to two-player mode, and it'll stop the aliens from attacking. So, to me, that's the best feature of the two-player mode. Uh, even if the buttons were working well in two-player, uh, I would say that's just, you know, you never had a pause on these games. And now you kind of, kind of do. One more cool thing I want to show you before we wrap this up, and that's the demo mode. Now, this, as far as I can recall, this is the only little handheld toy like this, especially from the era that had, like, would show you like an attract mode. So you just set that switch not to player one or two, but to demo. If you hold down this fire button while you turn it on, you get this little screen test, and then The game will play itself so you can get a sample of what the gameplay is like. Ah. And the computer could not quite defeat all the aliens. Look, I don't know how often you're going to look at an attract mode or a demo mode, but I just think it's cool that it's an option. Uh, they really thought this through. Intex did a good job, and uh, I'll be looking for other cool units that they put out uh, now that I've gotten reacquired, I'll say, uh, this Galaxian 2. What do you think about this Intex Galaxian 2? Is it something that you had or still have for that matter? Or now that you've seen me play it, I've infected you with a bug and now you've got to go find it for yourself, which by the way, I know I've can tend to be a negative influence on people's wallets. I've not the first time I've heard that, but it's cool stuff, right? <laughs> Look, I've reviewed a lot of these recently. So I'm going to put a full playlist to all of these vintage electronic toys that I've been reviewing lately over my shoulder. Plus another link here to a video you might enjoy. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy though in this video. And I cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.